All right, this video I'll be talking about the Middle East and basically you have here on top to the left you have Turkey then below it Syria Lebanon Israel Jordan Iraq Saudi Arabia Yemen Oman United Arab Emirates Kuwait so as you know you had the Saddam Hussein in 1991 George Bush's speech is about more than one small country it's about a big idea new world order so you have Baghdad right here you have Mosul you have the different parts of Afghanistan now we go on to Syria as you know Syria and Iraq are interconnected it's part of where Babylon used to be the Babylonian Empire and you have Damascus in Syria you have Assad and the rebellions going on there you have Lebanon and Beirut you have the Hezbollah and how they're connected to Lebanon as well as Iran in Iran, of course, you have important cities like Tehran, and which is up here, and you have Tabriz, you have Rashid, you have all the rest of the important cities in Iran, which is where the Shiites have a stronghold, Ahmadinejad, Ayatollah Khomeini as well. So, the Iranian Scythians were there in about 2000 BCE. So why Egypt has its dynasties, there's your Iranian, they're over there. Put them in their place, they're over there. Okay, Egypt and Sargon. Sargon's like, what, 2600 BCE? So, in Egypt, you have the people here already. The Africans, the Nubians, Egypt, Sudan, Eritrea, Ethiopia. Okay, you have the Silk Road, and we'll get into that in a minute. And how that ties into Afghanistan and, and the bigger picture. Now, go on to talk about, of course, Alexander the Great. He went through all these places and he left his um, marks on these places. Um, those Alexandria near the Murgab River as well, and you had you had different dynasties and different kingdoms, like the Parthian Kingdom, for example, in 224 A.D. and the Sassanids. Okay, they were the rulers of Iran. Then you had the the Huns, and you had other pla other um, groups and tribes, tribal people. Right now, of course, there was the October Revolution in 1917 in Russia. As so, if you understand how this all ties in with the Russians and the Soviets and the British and and the Arab tribes and how their history evolves together and how they start working together, well, some factions of them start working together and how secret societies start evolving in that area quite rapidly. So, when you go back to the earliest evidence in Afghanistan, it goes back to 50,000 BCE. So. So as you have um, the Nubians, they're traveling that way, they migrate over there. And then later on, everyone else kind of moves in. Now, it's important to note that you have the local dynasties like the Kushans, the Safarids, the Ghazanavids, you have the Timurids, you have the Mughals, and you have the Greco-Bactrians. Obviously, it has to do with Greece. Now, if we go on to the history of Kakistan, excuse me, Kazakhstan, we're talking about the steep belts. We're talking about the Karato Mountains, the Caspian and Balkhash areas. Now, this is where the Neanderthals came from, these mountains and in central Kazakhstan. And as we're talking about the different revolutions that went through there, the different, the different developments you had there. You had copper and metal, of course, were being developed there and refined. And if you go through the history of Afghanistan, you find that Afghanistan, the Taliban came in in the 90s, 95. They they took over from another Muslim ruler, and they come in. So, if you understand how when the Cold War was going on, and when the Taliban was fighting the Russians, and how this all ties into the Russians forming satellite states, and how trying to maintain their satellite states in America, trying to get a foothold in the region. Okay, you understand how Turkey has its problems with Greece and they had their skirmishes because of the proximity. And as well as you had Cyprus and the islands like Malta and Crete and these islands where the people who were bringing their gospels, they brought them this way. And Peter went to Turkey, for example. And if you understand the history and how it ties in together, you have to understand it, we're going back 50,000 years, okay? They're, the people who became your modern-day Iranians had already left Egypt long before 
the pyramids were being developed and made. So to give them credit doesn't make any sense. For example, the first migrations out to India, 70,000 BCE, you had the migrations to Europe and to Alaska that came later, etc., and Australia. And understand where how Neanderthals fit into the picture of Caucasians and how why they think they're better and well why well the racist Caucasians think they're better and we go on to how we got to where we got today from the Sassanids and the Huns and Alexander the Great and how did we get to where we are today well it was a series of empires and secret societies moves on the chessboard that's how the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden it's how they all tie into the area you need your source of water it also supplies fish you need your water sources to irrigate and you need your inundation to you need to take advantage of the inundation period of the Nile you need to use it to water the crops as well as well as invade and defend from being invaded so when the library of Alexandria was located in too close of proximity to the Mediterranean Sea is part of why it got burned down now understand that Turkmenistan and Afghanistan which are actually not on this map they're on the top right over here they don't, they're not really in the news well excuse me Turkmenistan is not really in the news as much as Afghanistan and Iran wasn't that much in the news when we were invading Iraq it's all about satellite nations and the countries who are at war with each other over who controls those satellite nations because Israel has a foot in Lebanon too but it's not as consolidated as Hezbollah but at the same time at the same time the Zionists run the whole show in a way so let's see what time we're at here okay we'll explore a little bit more okay if you look at where Medina is on the map okay and where Muhammad when he was breaking the idols there and and they decided that Mecca was the holy ground and you have their sacred stone and your sacred cube etc and if you notice where it is and you notice where the Jews went it's in the same area as where Moses put his uh, monuments 